All right. Let's stand together all over this place. It's good to see everybody out tonight. Praise the Lord. Christmas week. Oh, it's Christmas week. Come on. I hope you didn't forget that, right? This is always just a special night here at North Central and where we just have a chance to sing uh, some Christmas carols, to listen to some beautiful Christmas music, and, and uh, just to relax in the presence of the Lord. Uh, we're going to open up and do some traditional songs here to start with and just uh, sing about this joyous occasion. Amen. That Jesus came. Aren't you glad that he came? I want us to open with a word of prayer. Lord, we just welcome you in this place. We thank you, Lord. We celebrate you. We celebrate this time of year, God, and we just invite you just to have your way in our hearts, our lives, as we lift you up, as we sing your praises. In the mighty name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Sing this song with us. Here we go. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. with us. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Amen. Reconcile joyful longing. 
glory by born that man no more may die born to raise the son of earth born to give him second birth hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king hark the herald And most likely, probably, I don't know, very possibly, one of the favorite Christmas songs of the year for everyone is a song called, Oh Come All Ye Faithful. Amen. And I like the words of this song. We're going to sing all the verses. See if you remember them. They're on the screen for you if you don't. But sing out loud and sing it loud for us to hear as well. Amen. Here we go. Oh, come. Joyful and triumphant, oh come ye, oh come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold Him, born the King of Angels. Oh come, let us adore. Make it now worshipful. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come on, sing it, Nate.
all over this place. Can we lift our hands to him real quick and just say thank you, Lord, for coming. Come on. And Lord, we welcome you to this place tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you're here. Lord, not only did you come, but you sent your Holy Spirit and you're here even right now. And Lord, we invite you just to have a a place in this service, God, the main place, the, the highest place as we adore you, as we exalt you. We magnify and lift up the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We magnify you. Have your way, Lord, in our hearts and lives tonight in Jesus' name. Remind each person here tonight, God, of your great love for them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give Jesus another great big hand clap? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to greet somebody there near you in your little area and just tell them hello, Merry Christmas. Welcome them to this place. If you don't know them, take a moment and introduce yourself to them. I know. Let them know that you're glad to see them. Hallelujah. Come let us adore him. Come let us adore him. Hallelujah. Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord. All right. Well, we're so glad that you're here on this special night. And it's always such a beautiful night every year that we get to be here. And we're just three days away from Christmas. Wow. It's here. And um, Christmas is in the air as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I sure do enjoy this cool weather down here. (laughs) At least today. (laughs) It's going to change, I think, by this weekend. I heard it's going to get up to 80. So for those who are here from out of town, I apologize ahead of time. You, you just never know down here. I think last year it was cold. Tonight we're trying to keep the room cold so we can wear our sweaters. <laughs> but uh, that's right. We like cold weather. We just don't get it a lot down here. And I was passing somebody uh, who uh, was visiting one of our neighbors, a family member. They were from out of town up north, and I just apologized to them. I said, you you timed it pretty good. It's a beautiful day, but it's about to get warm, so hope you didn't pack a lot of cold weather clothes, but but Christmas is in the air regardless of the temperature. Spirit of giving, the spirit of love that seems to be everywhere. There's an old song, a Christmas song that I like so much, and some of you may realize who I'm talking about that sang it and I don't know who else sang it I mean maybe somebody else did but it was uh, if every day could be just like Christmas what a wonderful world this would be and it's so true because it just seems like everybody understands what the meaning of giving and caring and loving is but unfortunately not everybody understands why we love and we give and we care it's because God gave the ultimate gift to us in Jesus Christ. That was the gift. And that was the love. And that was the concern and the care that our Heavenly Father showed to us. The book of Isaiah says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful. Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 14 of that chapter 7. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. And we know the meaning of Emmanuel, being God with us. God with us. Not just in the good times, not just when we're on the mountaintop, not just when you get that raise, not just when you're healthy, but God with us throughout our lives, throughout this journey, throughout this spiritual life, the spiritual walk. He never leaves us. He's always with us. The account in the book of Matthew says it like this, verse 18, chapter 1. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, 
was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. And as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. A lot of times we sing the songs from the account of Mary, and we're going to sing some of that tonight, but you can't help but ponder in your thoughts, you know, about Joseph, his situation the beautiful nativity story and these things that we see on TV that try to portray the inward battle that he had. But God was faithful. God appeared through an angel to Joseph and just reminded him that God is with us. God has it all worked out. The son that your child, that your wife is having will be wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace. We just want you tonight just to sit back and enjoy a few songs that we prepared for you. Let them bless your heart. If you know the words, you're welcome to sing along with us. We just ask you don't sing so loud that the person in front of you gets distracted. <laughs> Have you ever been to a concert where the person behind you gave you the concert and you're like, well, I was here for the concert, but I got a concert. No, I, we do want you to enjoy yourself and just sing along if you feel you know the song and you want to worship, but we want you to worship and we want you to relax in God's presence tonight because he's here. Emmanuel, he's God with us.
It's a, it's a popular song that's uh, been on the radio on KSBJ and other stations, and you probably hear it or probably have heard it, but uh, I like it so much. Beautiful job. You're here talking about Jesus. He's come. Another song that we like so much around here that um, is probably requested just about more than any other song, uh, at least uh, on our uh, candlelight services, is uh, a song written by a comedian, of all things, in 1984, uh, Mark Lowry. It's called Mary, Did You Know? And uh, the words of it tell the whole story. Uh, Mary, did you understand, did you fully comprehend the role that you were about to be as being the mother of the Son of God. And I love the words in the scripture when it talks about, and Mary pondered those thoughts in her heart. And I think every time when I think about it, I ponder that in my mind as well. What would that have been like? What would that have been like?
Good job, Nate. Awesome. Awesome. Diving back a little bit to the year 1886 when a song was written talking about angels. And uh, Phil Wickham took this song and redid it. And uh, I don't know if you've heard the Phil Wickham Christmas album, but I encourage you to get it. It's beautiful. Uh, I love uh, the way he, he takes some of the old hymns. He doesn't necessarily change the, the, the melodies, but he adds to the melodies and he, he, he tweaks a little bit. And it's just beautiful. And uh, this version is Angels We Have Heard on High.
pretty. Next song we're going to sing for you today is um, a song that was, uh, they believe, written around the 18th. Mm, that's good. That's real good. A song that was uh, written around the 8th or 9th century and uh, still singing it today. Isn't that amazing? I love historical songs. I love the songs that have passed on generation to generation to generation. I believe it was finally penned in English and put in an in English binding um, music book in 1851. It's called O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
home. Beautiful chair. Beautiful chair. A uh, songwriter in 1856 had uh, gotten sick and was very ill and bedridden and just struggling and because of that had uh, battle with depression. And through all of that, the Lord brought him through and he had an amazing spiritual renewal in his life. And he penned some songs and one of the songs was a song for Christmas. It's called, What Child Is This? is this. This is a song that uh, kids uh, department used this past Sunday as they portrayed and did the, uh, the Christmas uh, segment there in our service, uh, Away in a Manger. Beautiful song. You know the words. Feel free to sing along. But I will tell you that the second and the third verse, again, another one of Phil Wickham's uh, versions, he's kind of tweaked them a little bit there. And uh, they're beautiful. So I mentioned this on Sunday after they had perform this and sang this for us and uh, that it takes a song from being a storytelling to being a song of worship and I like that so much about the words in the verse there's there's a difference in telling a story and there's a difference between singing it to someone and you'll see the difference in, in the new words and the new lyrics that he wrote for this but it's called away in a major it's beautiful Jesus. 
salvation beginning to break I love the Lord Jesus so gift from above the King of the heavens forever with us Ooh. 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 Stand with me and let's stretch our legs for just a minute here as we're coming to a close of our part. And I want us to sing this song together. One of the top selling songs of all time, one of the top re recorded songs of all time. Beautiful song about the night that Jesus was born. I, I was reading a little bit about that and I came to find out that Bing Crosby in 1935 sold 10 million copies of this single. Silent Night. Would you sing this with us? Silent Night Holy Night Holy
Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. I want us to sing that first verse again with your voices. Come on. beautiful. That's beautiful. You can be seated. Our last song of the night. And we tend to conclude our nights every year with this song and just one of our favorites around here. And by the way, I didn't say this, but we're so glad that those who are watching us on Facebook Live tonight, we're glad that you joined us. And But uh, this song has been as well reproduced and sung by many, many people and great singers and vocalists and throughout the ages. But the song is uh, Oh Holy Night. I love the part that says, fall on your knees, hear the angels' voices, O night divine. Sing along with us if you would like to. Let all within us breathe. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many things like that in the shower? Let me just say this. <laughs> that's me. I'm, that's, the, that's my shower voice right there. Just. Christmas is almost here. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Come on. Aren't you excited about that? In, in fact, I just got told something when I got here this evening. Parents, you're going to love this. Pastor Jeff, where are you at? Are you in here? I see Pastor Jeff. There he is. Come on here, Pastor Jeff. Got, got, got tell him before I do what I'm going to do. You got to come tell what's happening here. This is just coming about just tonight. And I just want to say thank you for, to uh, Frank and Tracy Reed with Tykes Need Bikes because they are phenomenal out of our church and what they do to bless families and kids in our community and let us be a part. They're phenomenal. And so, uh, Pastor Jeff, tell us. We thought it would be a great idea if Christmas came early. Is that okay? Come on. No, yes. It's okay for kids. Is it okay if we do Christmas presents early? Well, I've got a great present for you. When you guys leave here tonight, you're going to walk out here, and when you turn to the left, I'm still learning my directions, you're going to turn to your left, and we have a Christmas present for you. So moms and dads, let me give you a little logistics. So we're going to, you need to go with your kid, and we're going to probably just, because the room, we've got such a big room here, and not such a big room there, so we're probably going to, about four families at a time, go in, and while you're waiting, it's a perfect time to get to know your neighbor, talk about all that stuff, but it's just a fun night yeah. just for we get Christmas to bless our, presents. So if you're a kid here tonight, we're going to bless you tonight with Christmas gifts. Woo! So every kid here tonight. Now, so It's Christmas toys. It's toys. not Christmas. It's toys. It's toys. It's toys. Yeah, it's toys. And so, uh, which is pretty cool. I went and they showed me when I got here tonight, and that was, that's pretty cool. And uh, I'm still a big kid at heart, so when I walked in, I was like, I'd I take that right there. I'd take that right there. So, mom and dad, so make sure you go in there afterwards. So, turn your little lights on. I mean, I've been just like, somebody, let me see your lights. I mean, I've seen, I've kind of looked around the room, and some of you had your light on, and I saw some wear it in their ear like that, you know, and just, uh, aren't you glad for the light? Aren't you glad Jesus is our light? Because that's. That's what Christmas is, right? Christmas is about the light that penetrated the darkness. I, I, love, I never get tired of Christmas story. I never get tired of hearing about Mary and Joseph going to Bethlehem. No room in the inn, going to the stable. Angels appearing to shepherds, watching their sheep by night. They're coming and seeing the baby Jesus and they're astonished they're so in awe they marvel at it the good news of great joy mega joy in the Greek mega joy and they tell everybody around them what they had seen and what they had heard Matthew that's Luke chapter 2 Matthew tells us about wise men coming following the star from the east and the first foreigners literally the first Gentiles first foreigners that come and find Jesus and to worship him. And we don't know if there was two or three or a dozen. We always assume three because of the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But there's no guarantee it was just three. There could have been 12. All we know is that they sought Jesus out. And when they found him, they bowed before him. And they worshiped him. See, the wonder of Christmas and the beauty of Christmas is that God so loved us that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, who invaded our world. He laid aside his divinity, wrapped himself in the flesh of our humanity, and he lived and he breathed and he died. And on the third day, he rose again. And at Christmas, we celebrate God coming. Emmanuel, Pastor Steve read the verse out of Isaiah 7, 14. He's our Emmanuel. He's God with us. He's with us. And he's not just with us at Christmas. He's with us every single day of the year. In fact, he promised. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. 
See, Jesus is that light. The gospel writer John, who was one of his apostles, some say he was the youngest of the 12, close to Jesus enough, so much one of the inner circle, would lay his head over on his shoulder, had a close relationship with Jesus. He writes later, talking about Jesus breaking into the world, and he says of him in John 1, 5, he says, the light, talking about Jesus, he shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never, did you hear that? Can never, can never extinguish it. The darkness would never extinguish it. Listen, we know the darkness is real. Robert Frost, the poet, said, I have been acquainted with the night. I've walked in the rain, I've walked out of the rain, I've been acquainted with the night. We know that the night is real. We know that the darkness is real. We've been living through darkness. It seems like perpetual darkness for the last couple of years. And we're always, we're looking, thinking, when is this darkness going to end? I'm just going to say to everybody here tonight, the darkness is real, but the light of Jesus is brighter and the light of Jesus is greater. So no matter how turbulent, no matter how dark it may feel like and seem like in our world, even tonight, God's light is greater. Why? Because Jesus came and his light broke through the darkness. And because he shines in our hearts and he shines in our lives, our world has never been the same. Christmas is that day. On December or January or June the 6th, 1944, the Allies invaded France, Normandy, Western Europe. It was the thing that broke the back of the Nazis of World War II. So many people had already died. There were people being held in concentration camps, Nazi camps. Six million Jews died in Auschwitz. But on June the 6th, 1944, Americans and Brits, freed Frenchmen, Canadians, they stormed the beaches of Normandy and they took a beachhead and they drove until they got to Berlin and they ended the war and they freed those that had been held captive, set at liberty those that had been bound. Can I tell you, 2,000 years ago when Jesus was born, what we celebrate as Christmas God established the beachhead. 33 years later, Jesus stomped into Berlin. <laughs> Jesus went to the cross and he died and he rose again. And now everyone who has ever been held captive can know what it's like to live in light and the freedom that is found only in Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful for Christmas. I read the, or heard this morning on the news that this country of Italy, and Italy is the, one of the most religious countries in the world. And yet, I listened to a news report this morning that was talking about the country of Italy. They, they're trying to figure out a way to reintroduce the story of Christmas because of the secularization of Christmas. Here's a country that's considered one of the religious in the world. The Vatican's there. Catholicism has its roots coming out of Italy. And yet, the story of Jesus invading our world, the light penetrating the darkness has been lost. In that country, and they're talking about, they're trying to figure out a way to reintroduce the true meaning. Imagine having a birthday where they have a cake, they have candles, they have ice cream. Your name is even on the cake, but you're not even invited. I heard about two ladies that were, they got dressed up, they're eating at a real fancy restaurant in New York City. One of their other friends happened to come by the restaurant, saw them sitting inside in the window and comes inside in the restaurant and says, hey, I see you all dressed up, what's the occasion? She said, we're celebrating our, my son's birthday. He's turning two today. She says, he is? Where's he at? I want to see him. I'd like to see what he looks like. Oh, he's not here. I dropped him off with his mother, with my mother. 
She said, you dropped him off with your mother. Well, wait. She says, it would probably be no fun with him here. It makes no sense, does it? And yet every Christmas, how many people are having a party without the birthday guests? True story. A number of years ago, a guy got off the train about five o'clock in the afternoon in Washington, D.C., wearing a t-shirt, ball cap, blue jeans, walked out of a train carrying a case, violin case. He sat down the case, he opened up his violin, and he got up, he left the case open, turned it towards the crowd, and he began to play his violin. For 47 minutes, he played some of the most incredible classical music. They said five or seven songs he played. Incredible, just masterful. And people kept just walking by like he wasn't even there. Not realizing that the guy that was standing there playing was a guy by the name of Josh Bell. One of the most incredible musicians, violinists in the world. And not only on top of that, he was playing on a violin called a Stradivari that's worth $3.5 million. And yet people are walking by him left and right, not even paying attention. They said in 45, or in say in the first 15 minutes, they said a few people looked his way, but most people kept going by. In the 45 minutes or 47 minutes that he played on that, played there, they said that basically uh, 1,097 people walked by him. And out of the 197 people, a few stopped for a minute and a few threw some quarters at him. And he think he made like $35, $36. But two people stopped to listen. One guy, a postal worker by the name of John, and another lady who, uh, who studied demographics, a demographer uh, named Stacy, they stopped to listen. And when they interviewed him later, John said, he says, I, when I heard him playing, I realized the, the quality of this guy's music. And he said, I wanted to stop and listen because I could tell when quality was quality. Stacy said, I got off the train, and when I heard the music, and I stopped to look, and I saw who it was. She says, I had just seen him in concert three weeks ago. And I'm thinking, why is he standing out here in the subway train station playing? And she says, I wasn't going to miss it for nothing. And so she stayed there for the 40-something minutes to listen to everything that he played. And she says, I was amazed. I could not believe myself. What kind of a city do I live in that people are just walking by this man who's, who's worth literally thousands? He said, they, he, he makes $1,000 a minute, and they're tossing quarters at him. And she thought to herself, what kind of city do I live in? where people are passing by someone of that stature without pausing one minute to recognize who it is that's in front of them. And I heard that story and I've always thought about, that's Jesus. It's Christmas. He came, he invaded our world. It doesn't matter if December 25th is the actual birthday of Jesus. I've had people tell me, Pastor Larry, that's not the birthday of Jesus. It doesn't matter. This is the day we set aside to celebrate the fact that he came. Because he did come. And because he lived and died and rose again, you and I live. That light, it broke through the darkness. And our world has never been the same. And we've got to be so careful that we're not just so busy that we pass him by. And we miss who it is that's playing. There's a little story, and I'll, and I'll close with this, that's told about a man and his family, they lived up north, and it was Christmas Eve, snow was coming down really, really hard, I mean, it was just pounding, and the wife and kids were getting dressed to go to the Christmas Eve service, and invited the husband. He says, nah. He says, you go without me. He says, I don't understand the whole Christmas thing anyway. You go. So his wife and kids got in the vehicle and they left to go to the church as the snow kept coming down. He stayed in the house. He was just doing his thing as the house. And all of a sudden he heard this thud against the wall. He's like, what in the world is that? So he goes and he 
puts on his boots and he puts on his jacket to go outside and see what that thud was. And he realized it was a big flock of birds that were trying to get, they got caught in this snowstorm and they were trying to find a place of shelter and they were trying to fly in his kitchen window. And they ended up just being all over his backyard. So he's got his jacket on, he's got his boots on, he's thinking, I've got to figure out what to do here, you know, because he's a nice man, he's kind at heart, he got what I can do. And so he thinks the barn, the barn would be a nice place for them to find shelter and warmth. And he says, so he goes and he, he opens the barn doors and he thinks that they'll fly in the barn, but they just stay in the yard. So he thinks to himself, I'll get some food. And he goes in his house, he gets some breadcrumbs and he starts breaking breadcrumbs and he leaves the breadcrumbs all the way into the barn thinking that will cause them to go into the barn. But no, they stay, stay flopping around and in the yard and he's just standing there trying to think what what can I do I don't want these birds to perish and he's trying to think what what can I do he said and the way the story goes is that he has this moment of thought he says if I, if I, was, if I could just be a bird for a moment I could tell them if I could just be a bird for a moment. And as he said that, he was thinking in his head, the church bells begin to ring. And the story is, is that the man fell to his knees in the snow. He says, I understand now. You had to come as a man in order to save us from the storm. That's why Jesus came. We'll have our nativity sets with the manger and Mary and Joseph, the shepherds. We like the wise men because it's decorative into the nativity. But the feature of every, every nativity is the baby. It's the realization that God invaded our world because that was the only way he could tell us how to escape the storm. The Son of God became the Son of Man that we, the sons and daughters of men, might one day become the sons and the daughters of God. Aren't you glad for the light that is Jesus? Praise the Lord. Will you stand together? Let's stand together. Pastor Steve, I don't know. Can we sing His Name is Wonderful? Can we do that one? That, that throwing us off the bed? Can we sing that song, His Name is Wonderful? Can we do that, Pastor Steve? You'll have to lead us. His name is His wonderful. wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus, my Lord, He's the the rock of all ages, Almighty God, is He. Bow down before Him, love and adore Him. say a prayer for everybody here tonight. Father, I pray for every person in this room this evening. Lord, you know every family, every individual. You know us by name. Scripture declares you know how many hairs are even on our heads. You know us so well. 
God, tonight there's nothing that's hidden from you. You know our hurts, you know our brokenness, you know our struggles. But Jesus, you are the light that penetrated the darkness. And you have come that we might have life everlasting. The scriptures declare that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Your word declares, Lord, that we cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. You'll be our peace. You'll be our healer. You'll be our savior. You'll be our Lord. God, I will learn how to call upon you. You are the light. God, if there's anybody here tonight that's struggling in the darkness, God, I pray that even now, this evening, God, they would reach up to you in faith, confess you as Lord, and believe that that light penetrate the darkness of their heart, the darkness of their mind, the darkness of the world, and bring peace and joy that only you can be. And God, I pray for strength, Lord, and encouragement for every family. May they find comfort in knowing you. Your promise is you will never leave us nor forsake us, but you would always be with us till the end. You will be the light that never goes out. So no matter where we are, no matter what we're walking through, if we call on you, you're there because you are wonderful. And we thank you tonight, Jesus. And we praise you. We love you. We love you. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Let me hear you sing it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Hey, let's give Jesus a hand. Come on. Yeah. We're going to do this tonight for dismissal. And uh, we've got parents with kids, and they're all ready to go shopping in our Route 50, our NC Kids Church. And so uh, we wish everybody, we pray the blessings of the Lord, the grace of God, and the Holy Spirit upon your life, that you'll have a wonderful Merry Christmas. From myself, my wife Debbie, all of our pastoral staff, Pastor Steve, Natalie, Mom and Dad, all of us, every one of our staff, all of our pastoral staff. We just want to wish all of you, our board of directors, all of you a merry, merry, merry Christmas. It's not about gifts. It's not about that at all. It's about Jesus. So when you're opening up presents, whatever that is, I, I, I like Grandma asked her grandson, she said, Grandson, she said, she said, did you get everything you wanted for Christmas? He said, no, ma'am, but it's okay. It was not my birthday. It's not your birthday. I mean, it could physically be your birthday. There are free, I know some that have that birthday. But don't forget the main birthday. And again, if Jesus doesn't come, we wouldn't have Christmas anyway. There would be no lights, there'd be no trees, there'd be no poinsettias. There'd be none of that, but because he came. So, praise the Lord. We're going to sing joy to the world. We're going to let you be dismissed. Parents, if you want to go shop, Christmas shop with your, with your youngsters, go to Route 54 or the NC Kids Church Chapel. And uh, we love all of you. We are going to have church on Sunday. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I have church on Sunday. We're going to have, it's going to be called the day after. And so uh, you don't want to miss that, the day after. And that's going to be Sunday the 26th. And I hope to see you here at 9 o'clock and at 11.15. And so don't miss that. Go ahead, Pastor Steve. Joy to the world. Oh, drop off your candles on the way out. These are beautiful, but we like to keep using them every year. They're not my donation. Amen. So, so please drop this off and uh, in the baskets on the way out. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Joy to the world, the Lord is that earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare in room and heaven and nature sing. See